Okay, I'm wearing my Apple shirt today because I feel like the MacBook Pro is the one Apple product I have been so brutal against just because it has been so bad the past mm, two years. Wow. Because of that, because I've made so many videos though, I figured I couldn't let this opportunity pass the new 16 inch MacBook Pro to properly review about it and also give you some initial thoughts that I have as a predominantly PC user. I have an iMac but I have a Windows desktop with Office and then I still am rocking the XPS 15 9570. So from this perspective, a person who converted from the MacBook Pro two years ago, what are my thoughts now, John? And what's up, dude? While I say my thoughts, why don't we unbox the new 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro. This is actually John's MacBook and I picked out all of the specs for you because his last MacBook, 2016 MacBook, we're gonna get into all the issues it has. He got the 256 gigabyte version and he's like a video person and that's just a nightmare. Apparently so, it's the worst one I could have gotten. Yeah. I'm about to spec out your new 16 inch MacBook Pro because your poor early 2016 MacBook, look at this garbage and the sticky keys. It's bad, Jonathan Hill. What are you trying to say, dude? And- I take care of my equipment. I will say, I don't know anyone else, John, YouTuber, videographer, or photographer who shoots purely iPhone and you do that. And I think you would die without AirDrop. You don't see it here, but I basically tricked out John's desk space to where this MacBook is gonna fit in really nicely and it'll be more fun to be here and work. I know, I really can't wait. I'm like really sprucing up all my, my stuff. Yeah, I'm down, let's do it. Gucci, boom. Okay, we got you the i7. Um, all these YouTubers out here Whoa. getting the- Were you about to open up? <laughs> yeah. I'm the one who spent the money on it. That's true. He's the one who dropped like Oh my work. gosh. We got him the i7 because I'm still convinced that even though the airflow is improved, that it's still not going to properly cool an i9, the H series, which is like top of the line. But he has the good graphics. You got 32 gigs of memory because he always has a bajillion Chrome tabs open while he's simultaneously editing videos. And then you have a great graphics card. Break my new computer. <laughs> Grab that side of the top and let's pull it off together. <laughs> Ready? Okay. 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 Hold on. Stop the unboxing. <laughs> I have to let you know guys, once a month I throw a contest with collective Lacey sponsors. Yes, it's Lacey, not Lacey. I got a lot of people that were shooketh, if that's how you say it. I used to say Lakey IE. <laughs> Every single month I help them out with content and they sponsor these filmmaking contests where you can win up to $10,000 worth of <laughs> <laughs> and this month it's Kevin Perry. The stop motion legend, Kevin Perry. What's up, my name is Sarah Dici. And I'm Kevin Perry. I'm a stop motion animator and visual effects artist and I want you to join the stop motion challenge. Yes, every month Collective has new filmmaking contests where you can win up to $10,000 worth of prizes. So go to collective.lacy.com slash stop motion challenge. It opens up November 18th and closes January 6th. Check out the link. Stop motion out. <laughs> Let's go ahead and unbox the accessories. Stickers! Look, babe, you got stickers. Yay. It looks good. Thank you. What if I got this tattooed like this right on my face? <laughs> it's literally just a piece of cardboard because they're like, look it up <laughs> online. Yeah. We got the USB-C as normal and the charging brick. You know, this battery, they actually upped the wattage to the airplane limit to 100 watts. So yeah. it's actually packing a lot of punch, but you can still plug this in to your airplane outlet. Hey, it'll probably fall because this is heavy. So you might just want to get the extension cable if you try a lot, but hey, at least you can still charge on a plane. My 9570 Dell charger is too powerful and I have to bring my MacBook charger to charge my Dell. How crazy is that? It makes sense. Yeah. I got a few eyebrows. Are you guys ready? All right.
Does that feel like $3,500? Does it smell like it? I mean, it was $4,500. Oh, it was? Yeah. Okay, does that feel like $45? Are you sure it was $45? Yes. I think it's $45 because we got Apple here as well. I'm sorry, can I hold it? Why did you ask me when you were already holding it? <laughs> can we have that to compare? Yeah, I'll grab it. <laughs> he's being baby Yoda, that's what that was. While he's gone, I'm gonna open it up for the Man. first time. Babe, you opened it? What is wrong with you? <laughs> Congrats, because you are now an official owner of a physical escape key. I dislike the touch bar. I always have. I still do. But you have a physical escape key. Let's just do a quick sound test of the keyboard, and then we'll switch, and your mind's going to be blown. So first you type. Okay. Terrible. Awful. And then I'll type. You ready Why to feel the new keyboard? Yes. How much better is that? It's pretty nice. It's so much better, right? Yeah. There's actual depth to the keys. Okay. While well, he's setting up his brand new MacBook Pro, let's go through some of the issues that the previous iterations had from the redesign in 2016. The four USB-C ports that are also Thunderbolt 3, even though they pack a lot of punch in terms of data transfer, an issue that I had on my 2016 MacBook Pro and also John, are the very weak ports. They couldn't hold on to any hard drives. The hard drives and dongles would disconnect all the time. That is something I want to assess with this in my review in a couple months. Just a weak display hinge. John's MacBook has this issue. It like, it flops around. You have the terrible butterfly keyboard, which is just not that great of a typing experience. It is super loud. And you have the sticky keys to where you press the key one time, it'll maybe type J twice or three times or not even work at all. I personally have had this sticky key issue. And these blatant issues of the MacBook Pro is just what made me kind of angry, especially when I upgraded in 2016 spent the three, four thousand dollars to just be met with a MacBook that was breaking down before my eyes within the first year. So with this new upgrade, yes, they fixed a lot of issues. The keyboard is fixed. The cooling is improved, even though it's still a very, very thin laptop. And for the other things I'll definitely have to address in my review, I'm probably the most curious about if the USB-C ports are changed at all because, oh my gosh, the hard drives continuously disconnecting is just the worst, not to mention that there's no SD card slot, other ports. I am team non-dongle. I do applaud Apple for being like, hey, USB type A isn't a professional port. So we're just gonna hang out with our USB-C Thunderbolt 3 ports, but we'll give you the option of eight terabytes of SSD storage for an actual reasonable price. Of course, it'll put you right over $6,000 for this laptop, but eight terabytes of SSD storage in a thin laptop like this is actually insane. But to go to those lengths, I think is a pretty funny response to like, hey, you don't even need to plug in your hard drives that are USB-A. You can just store everything on your laptop or via the cloud. How's it going over there? It's getting there. All right, good. So props for improving the cooling and still keeping it as thin. Although again, my personal opinion when it comes to a pro laptop device, I don't mind a little thickness. My 9570 is a little bit thicker than this. And then the Asus ZenBook Pro Duo, which I just thoroughly enjoyed using was super thick, but wow, that packed a lot of punch. And I so enjoyed that second display. Again, you've heard me over the past couple years scream from the rooftop. So oh my gosh, the MacBook Pro is probably one of the worst Apple products in terms of value, what you get for your money. And I am proud to say here for the first time in a while that the MacBook Pro is no longer the worst. I'm so glad they fixed these blatant problems, put in a new keyboard, brought back a physical escape key, even though, well, they shouldn't have taken that away in the first place. My thoughts on the MacBook Pro have shifted a little bit, but I'm still good with my setup with the Dell XPS 9570, and I'm still trying to get my hands on a ZenBook Pro Duo. I received a lot of those questions on Twitter, like, Sarah, are you going back? Nah, like I'm good. Well, setting up your Mac Setting up my Mac! Setting up your Mac! Okay, you're in. Congratulations on the new MacBook. I'm gonna Thank steal you. this from you. Hey, we got the less bezels, the 16 inch display. Let's just do a bezel check real quick. So here we have the sad 2016 MacBook Pro and the much improved 
2019 MacBook Pro 16 inch, less bezels. The display is actually probably the least exciting news, um, even though that's the one thing you probably can always count on is like the color accuracy of MacBook Pro displays, even though I had a lot of problems with the actual ribbon and it being like reliable, it's still a beautiful display, very color accurate. John, I have yes. to say congratulations. Well, thank you so much for helping me buy this. Do you have any feelings? I do have a lot of them. Pride in my expensive MacBook Pro. Oh my God. He's just slowly dying on the inside for spending that much so money. Expensive. But I will say, okay, let's address the speakers were blown out. Definitely. And there's been much debate online, and this happened to a lot of people. It might have actually been Adobe's problem. So it was a premiere mm. issue to where they just would blow out MacBook Pro speakers. But a lot of people say, well, why even build a device or have software that even enables an application to blow out the speakers? Um, so who's to blame, Apple or Adobe? I'm not sure, but a lot of people have been tweeting about that issue and his speakers still blown out. It is very silly. They sound terrible. Please play your speakers. What's up, babe? I can hear. so bad. Is that a real song? I cannot believe how long that lasted. I'm between two giant corporate buildings. And the weirdness of them changing to the T keys. Look, now it's like the same size keys. Are you excited? I'm already like zoned into this. So make sure to stick around because I'm gonna do a proper review on this device. Um, but before it came out, I actually had the honor to do a little bit of a briefing and they showed off the power. And so this is something that I can show before I show you in the context of my workflow, but they had a lot of good like different stations showing it off. I will say, I think the type of person who this makes the most sense for and the improvements are super obvious is the programmer because hey, you have the physical escape key back. Thank goodness you have the better keyboard, Linux tools, a really clean command line. And then again, you have a lot of real estate on the display, have the extra vertical real estate. You know, it's not those 16.9 displays, which aren't my favorite. And it's just really powerful. It packs a lot of punch. Some of the other things that they showed us is live multicam editing with four 4K clips, sidecar editing with an iPad Pro, and also animating in Maya, which takes a lot of graphics power. There was an 80 million pixel panoramic that they were editing with an iPad connected via sidecar to the MacBook Pro and also connected to an external display. I think that's where you see the power of having those Thunderbolt 3 ports and having a Pro setup. I still believe that adding an SD card slot, and yes, this will be the hill I die on, wouldn't be that difficult for Apple. There's something about it that's not Pro when everyone buying this MacBook Pro could probably benefit from having an SD card slot. And a very recent example, and yes, I'm going to use my friends to push my SD card slot agendas. He didn't have the proper dongle to offload his audio from his SD. He was fine with his camera because he could just connect USB-C, but people forget things all the time. Pros forget things all the time. Just having certain utilities of ports, I'm just such a fan of, but now that has just moved to a preference of mine that I seek out in other laptops. And I know the MacBook Pro isn't going to be getting any port anytime soon, probably ever, because they did update this chassis to improve the cooling, to fit certain things, to fit the bigger battery in there. So it's safe to say that we're not gonna see a brand new form factor in a pretty long time. If you want a MacBook Pro, if you want Mac OS, you just have to come to terms with, hey, you're not gonna have ports other than USB-C. Do you care? I don't know, you, you might not. But thank you so much for listening to my rant. Hey John. What's up? They talked about how great the speakers are. You wanna play them full volume for me? It's not blown out. This is so exciting for you, John. All right, let me know if you like this video. Hit that subscribe button down below for new videos every single I week. It. I have some big ones coming up. I've been editing like a mad woman. Um, so thank you for the patience with that. New podcasts out every single Monday. We're getting creative up here. A lot of great guests. Search That Creative Life on any podcast app you listen to podcasts. It's always linked in the description below. And I think the only thing to say is one, Leave a comment down below. What are your thoughts on the new MacBook Pro? And two, stay peachy. Okay. Bye. Bye.